what what is fueling gold's prices uh, higher and, and silver prices higher? Uh, for gold, what's really fueling it is two things. One, in the East, um, in China, uh, uh, real estate has been the savings vehicle for 1.2 billion Chinese. And now they've seen that system totally fail. Now, the, their stock market is non-existent. So if you're, if you're, if you were a farmer or a peasant for a hundred years and your dad and mom told you that they're, you know, you can't trust anything except for gold and silver. And now you see uh, in the last 40 years, the government has convinced you that, you know, you can trust bricks and mortar and, right. and that fails on you. Where do you go? You go to gold, but not to rig, not to GLD. The, the, you know, the Chinese don't open a Schwab account and trade GLD. They buy the physical. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Florida Stacker on YouTube. I'm Florida Stacker. I've got one of my favorite guests, Lior Gantz, back with us today. While we were talking just before this started, we saw that gold has now hit another all-time high. Silver, is it going to go over $30 again? We're going to talk about that. I also want to discuss the conflict in the Mideast. I want to talk about Fed policy, the latest jobs report and inflation. And then uh, hear what Lior has to say about uh, the current gold bull market and uh, how long maybe he expects it to last. So Lior, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you for I'm good. Thank you for having me back. Hey, thanks for coming back. So gold, as we were just starting this meeting, again, back over 2,400 US dollars, another all-time high. Are we going to continue to see all-time highs over the next couple of months? six months what's your expectation um in november 2023 uh the fed uh, announced claimed victory over inflation and uh the market started to price in six rate cuts for 2024 right uh the russell the russell 2000 uh rallied about uh 30 percent uh representing uh that the interest rate sensitive parts of the economy so small caps companies with Harder access to capital, re, uh, real estate stocks, et cetera. Everything that was that, that is pro um, uh, rate cuts rallied hard. But um, part of the way the Fed works today is b just by announcing stuff, it creates uh, it creates a reality, especially if the market uh, believes it. And uh, and we went from six rate cuts to four to three um and now to, to zero full rate cuts um priced in uh for december 2024 so we we've literally went from very uh dovish to very hawkish and in fact every fed governor that finishes it an, an interview right now on tv says in the end and we won't hesitate to hike again um now before this very hawkish rhetoric uh, there was a Fed meeting just recently, and uh, oh, just yes, there was about a week back. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, in that meeting, uh, this was uh, March twentieth. Uh, Powell basically said, "Look, we have a dual mandate. We have maximum employment and stable prices. We feel like stable prices are trending towards um, uh, uh, better inflation, so moderate inflation." And this is really good. This is maximum employment. We are maximum employment right now. We feel very good about the economy. Um, and therefore, we favor this. In other words, we, the, the, the fist that we held on inflation, we raised uh, rates to uh, over 5%, which is uh, unprecedented for, for, the, for the Federal Reserve in general, from zero. Um, but now like, we need to let it rest because otherwise, we risk something good that we have here. Uh, which is uh, a very tight liberal market uh, and, and maximum employment. And obviously, you know, the, the boomers are retiring. So you, you have to replace them with the next generation, which is small. Uh, so you have to replace them with uh, the next generation, the millennials, which are huge, uh, the biggest generation. So um, what the Fed has basically told us in one sentence is inflation will be bumpy. And therefore, uh, what the what the market is is really uh, trying to tell you is that if there's inflation reads that are hot, uh, the Fed won't necessarily act, and if they're cold, they won't necessarily act. So we are in a higher for longer regime, um, and and in that higher for longer regime, the dollar will be strong because interest rates in America are the highest in the world. 
um, in the in the developed world, uh, certainly. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, well, if if you can put your money in a money market account right now as a as a boomer, you save two, three, four million dollars in, in in your uh, corporate America career, and you can earn five uh, percent on yeah. two on two million dollars. That's a hundred grand a year. So yeah, I'm, I'm um, there's 5 a lot of people on much less. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, you're not you're not 65. So right. Um, so that's one thing, right? Uh, and and uh, but the other, what what is fueling gold's prices high, higher and, and silver prices higher? Uh, for gold, what's really fueling it is two things. One in the east, um, in China, uh, uh, real estate has been the savings vehicle for 1.2 billion. Chinese. And now they've seen that system totally fail. Now, this, their stock market is non-existent. So if you're if you're if you were a farmer or a peasant for a hundred years and your dad and mom told you that they're you know you can't trust anything except for gold and silver. And now you see uh, in the last 40 years, the government has convinced you that you know you can trust bricks and mortar, and, right. and that fails on you. Where do you go? You go to gold, but not to reg not to GLD. The, the, you know, the Chinese don't open a Schwab account and trade GLD. They buy the physical. Right. And that that is one big reason that gold is at an all-time high. So just think 1.2 billion people. Secondly, so the demand in China is a part of the uh, this uh, bull market we're seeing. Huge, huge part. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, um, think about central banks. Central banks uh, have seen the United States um, doing nothing for many years about many things. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Russia is just one example of this. The United States is not sending troops to Europe. They're not uh, taking a stand and telling Vladimir Putin, look, we're, we're deploying 100,000 troops here all over uh, Sweden. They're not doing anything militarily. Same in the Middle East. Iran has been provoking the, the Houthis. They, they're not. They, they pulled out of Afghanistan. So America is telling its allies the petrodollar system is dead. Uh, so that's secondly. So why would you hold dollars if the petrodollar system is dying? Oh, Third is the virus. So once uh, we had the coronavirus, um, this was the perfect globalization moment. You would have expected that the, the, the the Klaus Schwab and and uh, you know the world you know the World Economic Forum, all the governments will come together in a G7, unprecedented, save the world type environment. Let's all come together and and, and fight this virus. No, every country pointed fingers at the other country, yeah. poked them for uh, zero COVID, and, and the other ones poked them for uh, staying open and, and and not doing anything. It, it was. Yeah. It was deglobalization at its best. It was how civilizations act differently. After the fall of the Soviet Union, America thought, okay, well, everybody wants to be us. Everybody wants to be American. Look at all these communists. They want to be American. So it it was the famous era called the end of the world. That's it. Let's 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 basically erase all of history. We wipe the slate clean, and everybody will want to be an American. Why not? Let's eradicate poverty. Everybody will want to be us. That was the dream until 9-11 when that bubble burst. It, it did. And, 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 okay, well, some people, Americanization is not for them. So right. um, my point is that central banks are buying gold and they are buying physical. So when central banks are buying physical, um, that's what you see on, 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 the, uh, on the price of gold. So that's the second thing. Um, and Third, with regards to gold, is um, the sanctions. So the sanctions that America's uh, uh, sanctions uh, that America is doing on about forty countries right now, it's not enforcing them uh, on many countries. Like uh, it, you know, it's it's just announcing them, but it's not actually uh, doing anything uh, just to see. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. it's very symbolic, right? right. Um, but it, many countries cannot risk it, and they're uh, divesting out of the dollar. So. Those things are uh, really, really bullish uh, for the price of, of um, gold going forward. Now, where does silver come in here? Yeah. 
uh, the, the price of silver is acting more like a commodity than a precious metal. Um, as, as you well know, 50% of, of silver is, is industrial. And right. uh, much of it comes from Russia and China. And if the United States is going to become the AI empire of the world, it needs to invest trillions in infrastructure. And yes. so it's not just silver, it's silver, it's copper, it's aluminum. And all these things now start to uh, uh, become question marks on where the, where would they come from? Because in, in hyper-globalization, which is the era of 1993 until 2016, until Trump post came to office. Yep. But, yeah, post, but but before before America said, okay, we're, that's it. We, we, we've yeah. given China all the chances in the world to be part of the World Trade Organization, et cetera. They steal our IP. They reverse their engineer. They, they, don't, they don't want to be real players. We yep. consider them a foe. Um, in that era, America gave up everything, it sacrificed its middle class, gave up everything in order for other countries to flourish and for the world to become this one unit. When that failed, America started to look at all their supply chains and realized, man, at zero COVID policies, we have real issues. We, we, we cannot get this, we cannot get that. Um, so what, what's happening right now is uh, a lot of precious metals and base metals, et cetera, are being looked at for supply chains. And wherever there's an issue, the price will get bid up uh, because you have to build these uh, infrastructures um, right. in, in other countries. Uh, it's not like the United States is short on, on silver, but they're short on silver mines. So they need to, to build them. Uh, and, yeah. and these take time, five, six, 10, 15 years uh, to put into production. So uh, that's what you're seeing in general. Um, with uh, with interest rates higher for longer, with a dollar, with gold, with silver. And I think that where the rubber meets the road here is if we see more companies like Tesla that needed to fire 10% of their uh, workforce, if more companies start to dial back um, because the profit margins are not where they should be or, or, or there's just a slowdown, then you will see the Fed needing to cut into some weakness. Um, and uh, so that's one scenario. The second scenario is that uh, this bull market will expand and uh, the commercial real estate will not be as bad of a situation as perceived. Regional banks will not be in a crisis then as perceived and credit will start flowing and you will have what's called a boom economy or yeah. uh, basically high inflation, high growth, which is more uh, my prediction. Uh, so that, that I'm sorry it was long, but I, I wanted to just cover the whole thing. No, I, I do have one question, though. One, one additional scenario. It's 2024. It's an election year. Do you see that having any impact here, namely in the United States, uh, on the value or price of commodities and gold and silver? Um, uh, look, it, it's, you know, th this election can go either way, right? It's, it's very split down the middle. Um, it will come down to literally uh, three or four counties in one of the yeah. swing States, it, it, literally one to, to three million people, which is one percent of the American public, will decide the fate of the free world. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think that it, uh, what what it tells me is it, it doesn't matter if Biden or Trump get elected, the the trajectory of the United States is the following: we are back in business, baby. We are not sacrificing our middle class anymore. We are not. Um, opening up to the idea of globalization. No, we want to uh, basically control a, or or lead, I should say, in the fourth industrial revolution. We want to lead in AI. We want to lead in yes. genomics. We will invest everything we need to, because if we don't, then the Chinese will. And just imagine, just ima you said it's 2024. Right. I want to, to imagine it's 2030. And uh, the Chinese have developed an AI that can formulate basically uh, most of the medicine known to men. And then they can patent it. How much of a disadvantage would the United States be if uh, patenting uh, all medicine basically comes from, from China? Oh, or yeah. some, some scenario where the Chinese have a, a grip over AI computing or or AI medicine formulating or 
some sort of a weapon technology, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are moving into that direction. We are moving onto this proxy clash between China and, and, and uh, the United States. And, um, and that's why I'm, uh, I really believe that in the next few years, you will see the American economy like on, on almost like a World War II type, you know, America, like ramp up of industrialization everywhere. We're already seeing it. But it's Great. it's gonna be it's gonna be way more because America hasn't invested in its infrastructure in decades. Um, yes, and, and so it's true. It's coming. So um, yeah, I, I live in Florida, so there's plenty of bridges, and there's there's many bridges that need some help. A lot of roads that need help. Um, I know in certain places in the north where the weather is worse, it's even worse than down here in the south. So yeah, uh, thank you for that insight, Lior. So one of the Absolutely. things that we talked about was the dollar and its current strength against other currencies. It's rather unusual to see gold moving north while the dollar is also gaining strength over other currencies. Do you think the buying in China uh, and potentially the, the conflict, actually you're in Tel Aviv, you're right there where this conflict mm -hmm. is taking place. Do you think that is uh, creating more momentum than the dollar strength right now for gold's uh, price increases? So gold and the dollar, they do trade in tandem many times. Um, uh, so that's not, as weird as uh, uh, as people traditionally think about. What's what is weird is a, is a strong silver with the dollar, and that tells you that we are breaking away from uh, the petrodollar system. Where you know if if the dollar is strong, then commodity is weak. If the dollar is weak, then commodity is strong, etc. It's it's pulling away from from that economy. We we are literally unwinding two major systems. The the Bretton Woods 1945 system, yes, um, which created um, the World Bank, the UN. The UN is a joke. It's a, it's, it's an absolute joke. Um, uh, yeah. I served it. <laughs> yeah, but the UN. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've done NATO and the yep, yep. Different okay. different stints during my military career. Little stints. Yeah. So the Security Council of the UN is the only thing that really matters uh, for the UN right now. The, the rest of it is is Theatrics. Um, the World Bank is 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 basically a failed project. Uh, many countries refuse to take loans. It, 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 it's a whole scenario. So, um, and the Marshall Plan, which worked fantastically for Europe, it 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 didn't work in other areas, right? Um, where America comes in and and you know in, in exchange for putting troops on the ground and, and military bases and defenses and the whole thing, they. Uh, come in and, and, and help the country to democratize and where it doesn't work, CIA comes in, topples them over, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's right. over. Then you had the petrodollar uh, system, which uh, basically uh, America uh, helps Saudis and, and other uh, oil-rich nations to uh, protect their uh, most valuable commodity, and they sell it uh, for a very um, – for a, a stable price to the European allies. Um, and other allies around the world. In exchange, the U.S. Navy patrols all the open oceans and uh, it, it deals with any conflict. That is over as well. You can see it with the Houthis and other piracies in Somalia over the last few years. And, and it, this will come back to the Far East. This will be everywhere. Uh, piracy will, will come back like crazy. Uh, everybody's inspired by uh, the Houthis that with a few rubber boats have basically changed world commerce. Um, so uh, my... my um, my point here is that um, uh, gold moving in tandem with uh, the dollar is, is certainly not the issue. The, the big one here is silver. Silver yeah. is at a two and a half year high. It's yep. nearing 30. It's going to go over 30 in no time. It's probably going to uh, go towards the 33, 35 um, in, in like in rapid speed. Um, and the main, main reason for this is still not retail. And that's really important. I think retail comes in only as it uh, starts to become evident that it's going to the all time high of 50. Right. Yeah. Um, and only then will you see retail get excited about 50 because they'll, they'll think it's going to 100. Um, I do think silver is going towards the 80. Um, that is, that, that's my ultimate um, bull market goal uh, for silver. But um, and a 50 to one ratio to gold. So gold, so gold 4,000 and silver eight. That's uh, where I, I see this. Uh, um, I don't think it's given 
the state of affairs of the world today. So yeah, th that's where I think this this one's ending. Um, and so uh, what's really important to understand is one, this is very early stage, um, yeah. especially for silver. Uh, secondly, because central banks are buying physical and the Chinese are buying physical, the mining shares are the, the, the most stupidly undervalued uh, assets in the world. Yep. Uh, they haven't moved much, even though gold is at 2400 and silver is at 30 or 29. And once they do, once Wall Street comes in to that sector, sector, it's such a small sector. The biggest gold company in the world yeah. is $50 billion in market cap. $50 billion, 55 dollars that yeah. it, it, it would take 40 of these to be the market cap of NVIDIA, just right. one tech company. So um, I, I think like th this is really where the, the main focus uh, should be. And when I think they will start to rally is when the market realizes that we are in this crack up boom economy where the infrastructure uh, uh, demands of AI will be unleashed and unstopped. We'll need all and the metals, all the base metals, all the minerals. Yep. Yes. And secondly, I think that the market is convinced, as am I, that it doesn't matter if Biden or Trump are elected, we are not stopping this uh, binge of uh, debt spending. Um, we're not reining in on anything. Uh, America is so split down the middle that, that there's no president that has the capacity to create real reform. You need a crazy event from an outside enemy on, uh, you know, traumatizing the American public for, for any president to come in and say, you know what, we, this was a huge blind spot. We need to do one, two, three. But unless that happens, it's business as usual. They're going to spend, 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 spend. And the, the national debt by the end of the next presidency will probably be at 40 trillion. So, yeah. um, yeah, that, that, that that's basically my entire thesis on um, uh, on the next few years. Yeah, that's that's. I agree with what you said there. I, I get asked the question from time to time: How high will the price go? How long will the bull run go on? And I tell them, I don't know uh, exactly how long it'll go on. But ask yourself: Is the uh, debt? You know, are we going to continue the deficit spending? Are we going to continue printing additional fiat currencies? Is debasement going to continue? Is inflation actually under control? All these different factors. Jobs report is good, but look how many were government jobs, things like that. I just don't see it getting better. Plus, all the points you pointed out with China, the middle class, buying gold, physical gold, and silver's correlation to industry and what lies ahead with us with infrastructure. Thank you, Lior, for breaking that, that all down. That's These are exciting times, actually, to be in gold and silver. Uh, and that's going to draw a lot of new attention, too. More folks will come in and begin to learn about the value of our precious metals. So, Absolutely. Any, uh, yeah. Any closing thoughts for the audience today um, on uh, on any of the topics we discuss? Well, one thing that I, I really like to stress is that the mining shares, in my opinion, have been drastically underperforming for two main reasons. One, central banks cannot buy them. And two, the baby boomers are, uh, you know, they're 70, 75 to 80 years old. They are chasing income. Whereas uh, they they know what what a bull market is in mining shares because they've been around in the 2000s, but the millennials have not, and I think that entire generation once it realizes what's happening here, you'll see the first bull market in mining stocks driven by millennials, and it will be spectacular. So uh, I I really want to stress that I think this is going to be a ginormous opportunity, but it's a fleeting one. It's a boom and bust cycle. We, we've been through the bust. We're going to see a boom and it's going to go away just like that. So if, if, if you're not mentally prepared um, and you want to join, make sure you are prepared. It, it, this, this will blow by, blow by, and it will be gone. And then you'll have to wait until 2035. So, yeah, um, yeah that, that's my main, my main message. I did uh, want to tell you that I put together three new exclusive reports for this interview right. yeah um that i think are really uh some of them are political some of them are economic so the political one is about klaus schwab 
And some uh, of the uh, agendas that he's putting forth that I think people should know about uh, as a must. Okay. Um, that report is at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash Klaus. That's K-L-A-U-S. Okay. Um, so, so, so that's, I think, like, re- read that. that you, you'll yeah. be fascinated on, on what these people are fantasizing over. Uh, agenda- secondly, is my port- yeah, the Agenda 2030 is, is just one part of it. Uh, secondly, is uh, my portfolio, which I do think that anybody downloading it and, and taking a look in, at those companies and, and then uh, doing his own homework like a grown-up and, and seeing what, what fits him and not, uh, that portfolio was up 54% in 2023. Wow. And it's up. Yeah. And, and, and most of it is an all time high right now, uh, in 2024. So that's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash portfolio. And then, uh, a little bit more about my silver thesis is at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash silver. Okay, I'll get all those links in the video description section. All you got to do, click down there. You can access the link. It'll take you right to it to read these reports from Lior. And Wealth Research Group, they're always on top of topics. That's why we like to bring Lior here to the channel. So thank you very much for uh, joining me today. It's always great to talk with you. And I hope to talk with you again soon here in a couple of months. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.